Well, how much, how much of this is transfer, transfer, transfer portal driven? Like how much? What do you have, mean the situation we're in? Yeah, I mean like, so we we've kind of talked about the lack of a culture. How I mean, we kind of talked about it last week, really. I I think. My audio and video were cutting in and out the entire time. I think you guys mentioned this. Like, yeah, I felt bad about that show. It, yeah, so it was like guys. the that was my internet. It's, it's not good. Yeah, d- <laughs> yes. not, there were times I was just sitting there nodding, like <laughs> Kenny's talking a lot because I'm like, I, I don't know what you guys are saying. I'm just waiting on someone else to smile for me to be like. <laughs> like I had no clue what you guys are saying for a solid ten minutes at one point, but um, a little behind the scenes. Kenny and I thought that TJ actually quit the podcast last week before we <laughs> even got started. He he was on the stream yard and said, F it, you guys do it. And then his he was and then gone. He just gone. And we were yeah. like, uh I was switching laptops. What what do we do now? Like, do we wait for him? I texted TJ, I'm like, Are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> I was switching laptops. It was frustrating though. Um but no, I think you guys talked about it. Just the the lack of culture that this team seems to have. Like there's not a true identity to them. And I I'm just curious how hard is that to to have a culture when you only have Malcolm and Jaden back from last year. So you, you don't really you're not really retaining much. So it yeah. seems like I mean you I don't, don't I think you can still have a culture that you're instilling from day one that they're here. I mean, he said it himself, like He'd been going easier and letting things slide that he normally wouldn't. Like, why are you doing that? Are you doing that because these guys are older and you think that they can get away with it and still win games? Like, why? Yeah. I think it goes even deeper than that. Unacceptable to me. Like, if you're going to have a program, like, hold everybody to the same standard, no matter who the hell it is walking through the door. I think it's another part of it, too. I think it goes deeper than that. I think it, I think if you have a culture in place, it dictates who you recruit. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, that's the other thing that's frustrated the hell out of me about this season is like, and we've talked about it before. Sure. But he, he talks about his identity and his teams are, are defensive minded defense travels. They want to be the best defensively they can be. And then you, yeah. and then you, so, okay. So go out and get players that will fit that. You compose a roster of the exact opposite. I mean, I'm not saying that, but like, get I, at least get guys that will fit into that. Don't go get a bunch of dudes that are the alpha scoring, first minded cheeks defenders. And then now we're in this situation. It is not, offense is not our issue. I mean, you score 88 points in a college basketball game, you should win. You should win 10 out of 10 games. Of course. In regulation, 88 points. No, I would agree with you. I mean, I, I think if you talk about, if you but solely. I, Focus on who are your best defenders that they brought in from the portal. I mean, for a moment there, JQ was pretty locked in. I'm kind of falling back on that. I mean, I, I think that uh, Jordan has been fine defensively. I mean, that's really about it. Like, uh, Jaquan doesn't do anything defensively for me. Jaden may honestly be your best wing defender. I'm, I mean, I. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know how to find to answer, the analytics to, to that, answer but. your original question. I think the portal definitely plays a part of this, right? Like, it's from a team chemistry. It's going to be when you have thirteen new guys coming together, and most of them are showing up late. Like, it's yeah. not really a surprise that you're going to have issues. And then on top of it, when it's thirteen guys that are coming from teams where they were high level contributors to teams, or the go through guy, even if they were on a bad team. Like, it's going to be tough to get those guys to mesh. Do you think this this season specifically alters how Penny will oh, I go think about based, roster construction? I think based on the out? comments that he's made, yes. It seems like it. I mean, it should. I mean, if he, he learned that the five freshman thing wasn't going to work. Yeah. He changed from that. Now he's understanding you probably can't just go get five, eight Mercedes. alpha – transfer portal guys yeah. with one year left and that i mean can it work yes is it easy to do not in this, i mean shit look at arkansas is there in yeah, a they worse situation as as us, yeah and basically did the same thing um 
So I think the portal definitely plays a role, and he's got to establish and hold everybody to the same standard no matter who it is. If it's a fifth-year senior or if it's a freshman that's walking in the door, like you got to treat everybody the same way in the program and hold all of them to the same standard. And I don't think that that happens. Yeah. I I am curious how he goes about it. I think he knows that, you know. I don't think it happens year to year, and I don't think it happens player to player within the same teams. Yeah. I mean, I think there are players on – the current team that probably get away with more than other guys. Like a son. And it shouldn't. Is what <laughs> no. I mean, maybe. I maybe. Wouldn't I don't know. I was just making a dad joke. But somebody like Malcolm or somebody that he knows that's been around, he's sure. probably going to let slide a little more than somebody who's here for eight months. Like, I don't know, JQ or a younger, I don't know. Yeah, I I do think this this season specifically will dictate how he goes about it's just like a, another step in the ladder. I mean, we've said it. We said it going into this off season. We were excited about Chandler coming back and having some of that continuity and guys that have been here sure. to help establish and enforce that culture. Like they know they've been playing for Penny. They understand, and that helps when you have guys on the team. Like I mean, they've said it. Like we mentioned earlier, like Malco from this point forward, they're saying is he understands what it means to the city being from here. He understands what Penny's wanting. Like he's going to be that enforcer within the team. But I think it, <laughs> what? <laughs> Kenny thinks that's a joke. Dude, no, did, I, he did laugh. At I think you. you need those guys. Awesome. In uniform as much as on the bench as a staff member. It, so next year when Malcolm is a grad assistant on staff. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and Jaden, I do think Alex would have helped as a GA on this team. I just, I'll say this: this seems like every year that Penny has been a college basketball coach, he has just climbed this new rung of his coaching career. Right? I mean, that's the other that that freshman that that freshman roster. You know, the one with Alo, Tyler, yeah. all that. The big gap between that rung and the next rung. Big lesson learned there. I think this is going to be another big, le- big wrong, big gap between. The I mean, as long as he's learning, which so far, for certain things, he's shown that he adjusts and learns. But I mean, that's the other thing. Like, it literally is only his sixth year ever of sure. coaching college basketball, right? Like, but that, I don't, I don't know how much, and I'm probably going to get flamed for this, but like, basketball is still basketball. In the grand scheme of things, like he's been a basketball coach for many years. Yeah. There are small things that he does that it's like for a guy who's been coaching for 12 plus years or whatever the number is, like you don't, you shouldn't be doing that. So, I mean, like, what's one of those things? Well, the inbound corner play. If you're saying that's Penny, that definitely counts as, I mean, that, it ha- yeah, it has to be him. I don't, it's right. It I happened. mean, for six years with different people on the team. So, and playing 12 and, guys in and one new game. New staffs every year. I don't think that's changing. Well, no, but this like is who he is, and I get that. But at a certain point, it's like he's a charitable guy. He gives back. The NCA even ruled that way. <laughs> Look, I think he's going to learn a lot from this this year's construction I think of the roster. The and other thing, change how he go, does things going forward. The twelve guy thing, and just in general, like maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Penny is a people pleaser. Like he wants to try to make everyone on this team happy. Yeah, but I think some of that is... In certain scenario. Well, maybe I take that back. He added Jordan Brown, and I know that that probably pissed off the entire team, so maybe not so much. Yeah. yeah. But in that, he was trying to make Jordan happy. Okay. And I will counter with having Jordan makes your team better than not having Jordan. Does it? If Malcolm breaks his leg tomorrow, yeah. I think it's nice to Oh, okay. My point is... You now have an option that you didn't have before. Well, we played our best basketball and looked the best we have all year when Jordan Brown wasn't a part of this program. He's playing like five minutes a game. It's not like it matters at this point. It's not about on the court. It's not about playing five minutes or not, which I will say five minutes and he had three boards yesterday. So maybe (laughs) getting out rebounded, we might have needed a little more than five minutes out of JB yesterday. I agree, Kenny. It's It's just the whole situation. Again, establishing a culture. And holding people to the same, like, I'm not on the team, but I can tell you for, like, that would have probably pissed me off. For sure. 100%. And it's just like, 
what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, I, I think in his mind, he is doing what he thinks is best and gives the team the best opportunity to win as many games as possible. Sure. But is that worth the cost of what's now? And I'm not saying adding JB is why we've we're no. on this losing streak, but I think the chemistry issues that are being discussed and talked about are certainly not – it's not helping, that's for sure. I can't – I don't look at the games and say that JB I've heard that they, is the they've, issue. They've since brought him back. The team has been calling him Doo Brown, not Jordan Brown. Trey. They actually – convince him to change his Instagram name to Doo Brown. I don't look at the I don't watch these last three games and say, you know what? It's because Jordan Brown's on the team. I it's and, well, because because just, it's Tomlin got added. That's what it, <laughs> No, they just leave guys you wide watch, open. No, you watch the last eight games since Tomlin was added and you're like, okay, it makes sense. No. It all lines up. No. Memphis went from allowing if, fewer than one point per possession to now anything, they're like one and a half points per possession defensively. If anything, adding Tomlin to this roster. He got lost against South Florida and gave up the freaking game he winning. Did. He did do that. But I think there's – we've and we've already talked about it. He shouldn't have been in the game in that moment. It should have been Malcolm. That was your your leader refusing to play in cr- critical moments. But maybe that was Malcolm taking a stand trying to tell the team, we got to do this together. <laughs> and by doing this together means I'm sitting out. I don't know where we go from here. I don't either. I have no hope. 